Hey guys, hello and welcome to another fun episode of Bob's Barn Workshop. Um, as you know, I went to a mini mayhem rally a couple of weeks ago. They decided they thought they needed a need for a uh, speaker system so they could uh, talk to the larger crowd. Well, I got digging around my stuff down here and I found this old Radio Shack 20 watt amplifier. And... I tested it out with some different speakers here and it works fine. I ordered some cheap microphones. The issue that I found that it actually had connections for 12 volts, which means you can run it off in a car plug out in the boonies, which is perfect for what these guys want. Uh, unfortunately, I tried and tried and tried to find this mate to this connector and couldn't find it. Well, I tested this and it only draws a little over an amp when it's cranked up. So I got one of these little uh, barrel sockets, if you want to call them that. And I'm going to install it in here. I've already drilled the hole, slid the chassis out. And I actually found a couple of uh, cigarette lighter plugs, if you want to call them that. So they can plug it in with the mating connector for this. And I'm going to put those end to end, so they'll have about 12 feet of power cord. They'll have their DC power. You can plug it in and use it uh, AC, of course, too. And uh, a couple of speakers. It's got speaker cables connected to it. So as we go through this process, uh, I'll, uh, you can follow me through. All right, all right. So as I'm working on this, I'll turn you on and off so you can see. I'm, t I'm recording with my little elf camera today because uh, that's what I've got right here handy. So, power connector. That's got a burr on it. So, we need to get something to deburr that. I've got a pair of little side cutters here. Just knock those burrs off, which actually will help increase the ground bite in case there's any coatings on it. I also sprayed uh, sprayed the pots down because they're a little scratchy, so uh, they're open pots. I sprayed uh, contact cleaner in there and uh, took the scratchiness out of them. You know how they sound. <laughs> Come on, get in there. I measured you. I know you're a 5 16 Well, there we go. So how y'all doing out there, huh? We got spring here in western New York and it's colder than a banshee outside. I don't know why it has to be so cold. I'm ready for that spring weather to come booming in here. I don't know about you guys. Ready for warm summer fun, huh? I haven't got the right tools here, of course. I'm in the basement behind my bar. Now what I need next to do is, uh, need to do next, is I need to connect. This is already grounded, I believe. Let me see here. I'll put this on beep. My handy little meter, little tiny circuit mate here. It beeps though. And we're going to go from chassis that's the center huh well apparently that isn't connected to the chassis anywhere Decide which one is the barrel connector here. Let's try that. Hold on. I'll try to keep you centered here. I got my little meter again. I'm going to find out what's the barrel. And that's the non white one. So the white one's going to be the hot. So we'll plug him in. Apparently 
Apparently it's that one. And so the uh, center must be the other guy. So I don't know what that guy does. My meter's freaking out here. Whatever. What it does short to the chassis when you plug it in. I really don't know what that other connector is for. I mean, it doesn't go to the center conductor. It doesn't go to either of these. So I guess we'll just leave him out of the way. Again, the plain black wire is the outside. All right, that's the ground. So I, there's a ground wire down in here I can attach it to. And there's the hot wire from the switch. All right. Well, I will get the soldering iron out first and we'll get that hooked up and we'll solder these wires together and make this splice. We'll test this, uh, this lighter plug out that I got. I'll cut the end off it here. Because I don't believe I think I tried this. This one doesn't fit. So you gotta go, you gotta go. Boom. That is gone. Zoom back a little bit here. Hopefully this will give them good enough contact. These things do not draw. I got some heat shrink back there too. These things, as I said, it only draws about an amp. So, even though this wire looks pretty tiny, it'll handle an amp. Alright, let's try this now. Hopefully the white will show up as the hot tip. Good. And the bare one. Okay. We gotta do solder them together and shrink them up. I'll be back. All right. So what I'm gonna do now is when you plug the plug in, it automatically grounds this. But I'm still gonna not rely on that. So I'm gonna put a ground wire from that. But I also have a hot wire here that I'm going to run from this old receptacle over to the new one. So I'm just going to cut a short piece of wire. I got my soldering iron here. Oh, I didn't bring any solder. Oh, yes, I did. What I'm going to do is this is called tinning. Now I should clean this tip. Need to get some what this flux helps to do too. This is flux core wire. It helps to clean off the contacts. So your solder will stick because these are pretty cruddy. So as it heats up you see that flux actually kind of boiling on there. Being paranoid, I'm going to test this just one more time. Excuse me, I don't want to blow up my amp. So I'll touch the center tip. Okay, that's the hot one right there. Okay, I knew it was, but as I said, paranoia strikes. I'm going to tin my in my wire here a little bit. It's getting hot now. I wonder why that didn't melt together good. Yeah. Not 
that extra stuff off in there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I made a hook. I'm going to heat up the solder on the connector, push the hook through, push it together, and hold it still until the solder sets. Okay, I've already got this untinned. Get a little bit more fresh solder. Now, the reason I'm putting solder on the tip is to give it better contact with what I'm soldering. I'm not using this. I'm just using the solder blob to heat the, con the contact area. I'm not blobbing it together with the hot solder. I'm uh, just using that to make. You want to heat your material up, not uh, not use the solder as. It's getting pretty ugly, but I think it'll work. Yeah, she's on there. All right. I don't have any black wire, so I guess I'll just uh, steal a little piece here somewhere. I want to make sure I don't burn stuff up, so I'm going to pull these wires up out of the way. I'm going to try to get right onto that. There's a big solder blob on a tab down here. I just want to make sure that that wire gets melted into it real nice. There we go. Clunk. I'm not cutting this way, I'm just using these, the tips of these cutters to make a hook. There we go. We'll be cooking with gas here pretty soon, boys. Melt that dropper through, bend her together. Pull on it till it solidifies. If you move it around too much when it's cold, you'll get what is called a cold solder joint. And your contacts will not work. Alright. Black to black and white to white. Easy enough on this one. This is the wire that came with this connector. So I know that's the right one. Right plug. This should be the center. Okay, and the center of the hot plug over here. Just double checking again. All right. So now what we need is a little bit of uh, heat shrink, heat shrink tubing, and uh, I cut it about inch and a quarter, maybe. Give me enough room. I have to pull back farther. So I'll pull that guy back. Put the heat shrink on first, boys. Put the heat shrink on first. That looks like that wire's already tinned. I'm going to spiral it around the other piece of wire. So it'll hold itself together. Just like so. I should have a damp paper towel to dip this, to wipe this tip off on, but I don't have one with me. Sorry. Watch that solder flow right through all the strands of that wire. There's one. The other one, we'll do the same with that. If 
this was higher voltage, I'd stagger these joints so there would be no chance for bare contacts ever coming together. Being 12. Alright, I don't know if you missed that. <sighs> Camera just shut down by itself, so I don't know. But what we did is we took those wires I was talking about and I did white to white, black to black, which makes gives me about a 12 foot long power cord here to a regular lighter plug. The lighter plug socket fits into the back. I connected a red wire. I used my meter to check the polarity and make sure the connector was right. Red to red. Black goes down to the ground wire on the chassis, which everything seems to be grounded to the chassis. So it's a grounded chassis product. Um, let me make sure I get that little chunk of lead out of there so it doesn't short out anything. Attach the ground wire to that ground terminal. There's ground terminals all over the place here. All right. I'm going to get a microphone out here and uh, we'll see what we're doing. All right. I have got my 12 volt power supply over there is set up for about 13, 14 volts. PA system is on here. I've got a microphone hooked up. Voltage is on. I don't have anything hooked up to this yet. Now, note on my power supply, the black terminal, the ground, is the yellow wire. So that's what I'm going to hook up to the ground ear here. The green is the positive. Hook that up to the positive terminal. Now, now it's probably, it does make good sense to check my voltage to make sure I got 12 volts. Set the meter to DC volts and I will go between the black and the red. I got 13.3 which is just about what you would read on a car battery. All right, and it's positive, so we're good. So the next step, turn on the power switch. Hey, we got a red power light. We will set the master volume at about. We'll turn microphone one and two all the way down. Turn on mic two. I got just a small speaker set up over here. It's just a a Sony center, center speaker, but it sounds really great. And for making announcements, this should be like really plenty loud enough for them now for people to hear announcements at gigs and whatever uh, out in the boonies. And uh, they can run this off the cigarette lighter in their van and, and look at the power on this. That's if you look at the meter. The meter on this is three amps all the way across. It's a little dirty. It's been sitting down here a long time. And you can see it's barely, even when I shout into it, it's not even going up to one amp. So that little tiny wire will be fine. And these guys will have a PA system. So uh, the tone control, so it gets muddy when you go down here to 10. You need to put it up on uh, zero. Uh, to get the brightest sound and there you go. We got a working PA system I'm going to ship this out to the guys and hopefully they can use it. I've got another speaker for them to use uh, I'm gonna just gonna measure the polarity of the speaker wires so they get the same polarity in their speakers That will help that be a little bit more efficient. Okay guys. This is uh, Bob's barn workshop here doing a little electronics today real simple stuff Maybe we'll get into some more electronics later. So uh, God bless. Take care. I'll see you next time. Well, I discovered uh, this microphone connector that they sent me. It had the wrong polarity plug on the end to go to a microphone. So I just hacked that off. And where did I throw it? There it is. So I need this to, to guide me through connecting it up correctly. And let's see, these pins are numbered. So 
So I need to plug this into here to make sure I know which one is the input line. It's the recessed one. And then they shorted Oh no, 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 it's this one. Number two is the hot one. Then they shorted one and three. Two is hot, one and three is shorted, okay. So, I cut the end off. That belongs with that plug. That's a good plug, I'll save that. Put your wire through your connector before you strip it first. It's a heck of a lot easier. Alright, I got my little exact one. I'm going to cut a generous, generous amount so that I can uh, have enough room to work with here. I just scored that to try not to cut through into my wires. Ah, but this is a nice cable. This was a cheap cable that I ordered from on the internet and it came with the wrong polarity on it and I complained and so they refunded my money so I guess I can't really complain that they refunded my money but it's a it's a good size conductors in here so they're not those I've gotten cheap microphone cables before and the leads were so skinny and worthless inside now there's not usually a whole lot of work room to work inside here, so two is hot, one and three is shorted. Does that have a hole in it? No, it does not. So these are silver plated, but they uh, got a little tarnish on them, so I'm just going to scratch them up a little bit here first. I'm going to tin, you saw me tinning wires before, I'm going to tin that ground wire so it all stays together. What I do is I heat it up good like this, get it all liquid, and then knock off the excess. So, I need that to go to three and one, so I guess what I'm going to do is I'm going to start right here with three, and then I'm going to bend it. Just like that. And... So it will lay in there like that. Then I'm going to bend it some more. Because I shouldn't have tinned it so well. <laughs> it would have been easier if this had holes in it, wouldn't it? And I want that to go over into this one. these guys off. It really doesn't matter if these guys touch the sides. Oh, there is a little insulating uh, sleeve that goes in there, so I'll throw that in there for now. So. It'd be a lot easier if I had this in a spring plant working with it, which I do have a nice device. This 
work that guy down where he needs to be. So, put it right in that socket. I just have a coffee can here for my... That guy's going to be very short. That's all right. We just don't want him to get shorted. Shorted. To the ground. The grounds are very stiff. That's one reason for... Chain them. Nice and stiff. Okay, now. Let's see if I can get that guy to drop right in there. There we go. He's going to be helpful. Chinning also makes these real fine wires easy to strip, don't it? And there we go, she's set. It's a winner. All right, we'll slide our protector up over here. After he gets this assembled, I'll check it for shorts. Get up in there. There it goes. These are real nice, expensive connectors I have here. Now, these screws are reverse thread, so when you tighten them, they actually back out and the head of the screw comes out into the hole like that to lock that. And then these are your uh, cable clamps to take the strain relief in the back. And we'll just mark them down snug. There's a couple of plates in there. These screws don't go directly in. All right. Now I'm going to set the dumb thing back up again. I took it all down. Set the PA back up again so I can test it. All right. Got the amp here, got it plugged in. I'm just running off an AC. I wrapped the speaker wires around here. I just brought one out here to the little speaker. Uh, turn the switch off on this. I got it plugged into mic one. Turn on the power, I get my red power light. Master volume up to about half. Microphone. Check, check. One, two, three. Hey. A little scratch there, but that's an old amp. All right. This should make announcements very nice for these guys. All right. I made, uh, I bought this really cheap mic. It was like six bucks. The cable that came with it is like four feet long. Pretty much worthless. So I ordered this other mic cable, which I just showed you guys. I had to change the end because it was male. This needs a female. So now we're all set. And I got the mics with the on-off switches. All right. That's it for now. Enough electronics and mics and PA system. God bless. Take care. We'll see you later.